Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Chapel at the Academy at Bright Ideas Press. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Uh, these chapel meetings, we have them pretty much every month and we get to hear from different speakers and have some time to pray together as a community. They're not required, but I, I think it's important for us just to remember that we're in this together. We're doing homeschooling in our own homes, but we are part of a bigger community and that we can love and pray for one another and, and not feel like we're in it alone. So I think it's important to have a place for that kind of community, for prayer, for refreshment, for being built up in Christ and encouraged. So I think we'll, we'll start off this year with a new theme verse. This year we're gonna be working our way through 2 Peter chapter 1 verses five through eight. And the verse says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with self-control, I'm sorry, with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they will keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, before we dig into this passage, let's just pray together for a minute. Heavenly Father, we love you, and we just dedicate this time to you. We ask for your wisdom and grace, Lord, as we meditate on your word that you through your Holy Spirit, would speak to us, that you would give us understanding and illumination, and that we would be built up in you. We love you so much, God, and we need you, and we trust you, and we are so grateful for all the things that you have done in our lives and in our whole world, and we can't wait to see what you're going to do next. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. Well, I know that some of you have classes at uh, one o'clock, so I'll be uh, conscious of that and make sure you have plenty of time to get there. But I want to dig into this passage just a little bit because we're starting out the school year. And one of the things that can be frustrating at the start of the year is getting into our lessons and spending a lot of time reviewing what we did last year. I remember as a student uh, in college, one of the first things that we would always do is spend oftentimes our whole first day of class, our whole first week of class, just going over the syllabus and not even getting into the interesting part of the lessons. It was, it was all prep or all review, and, and sometimes that was really frustrating. And as we're getting into the school year, we're just starting off, I want to encourage you that this can be a milestone year for you. This can be a year of remarkable growth and learning, but that doesn't happen automatically. That doesn't happen on its own. If it's going to be your best year yet, you're gonna to have to remember some things. You're gonna to have to remember and keep in mind your past, your present, and your future. Why do I say this? Well, think about your past for a second. And think about your past in light of this verse. The verse starts off with, for this very reason. And, and any time you see a, a for this reason or a therefore in scripture, you want to make sure that you back up and know what the therefore is there for. And in this case, the therefore, the for this very reason, is talking about a couple of verses prior where Peter says that his, I mean God's, divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith. So this very reason is the history 
of redemption that God has orchestrated. The fact that God has planned and prepared all of history. The fact that God had you in mind, even from before the foundation of the world, that your soul was written in his book and chiseled on his hands before you even knew it. That should give us pause to stop and think, why has God done all this? And what does he want me to do with all of this? And Peter's kind enough to answer that question. He says, for this very reason, here's what you do. You supplement your faith with virtue and knowledge and self-control and all of these other character qualities. Now, obviously, these character qualities, these virtues, are not what our salvation is based on. That salvation is by grace through faith. And Peter is making the assumption here that you already have faith. But now we're adding to that, not because we need to be saved, that's already taken care of, but because these are a part of the process of sanctification, that ongoing process of being conformed to the image of God. We supplement our faith because God has done all this great work, and now he has called us to a great work of our own. He's called each of us to work in his kingdom. And in order to do that, we're going to need not just our faith, that's our starting place, but we're going to need all of these other character qualities that he lays out. It's it's interesting living in these times because we have access to more libraries of information, of knowledge and wisdom and understanding at our fingertips than any generation in all of history has ever had. Just a few hundred years ago, we didn't have printing presses with movable type. And being literate was something that was restricted to a very few, a very small group of people knew how to read at all. And to have something as precious as a book, much less the book, the Bible, hardly anybody had those. But today, You're watching this on a computer, which grants you access to untold volumes of good and useful and helpful information. You can learn pretty much anything from right where you're sitting right now. That's amazing. You know how to read, most likely. What a gift. All of human history has led up so far to this point, and we have access to tremendous opportunity to learn, to grow to supplement our faith and our virtue with knowledge. Take advantage of that. We stand on the shoulders of giants. You've probably heard that phrase before. And it's not just our knowledge and our book learning, but we have access to so many great teachers and preachers and people in our lives who are willing to invest in us and to disciple us. Your parents are homeschooling you because, among many other reasons, they want to invest into not just your knowledge and and formal academic education, but your character. As you seek to grow and supplement your faith with all of these other things, take advantage of these great resources that have been placed right in front of you. The past calls us to take advantage of this. And the present, we keep in mind the past, and now we need to look at our present and realize that now is the time to learn. As a youth, you have the opportunity. You, I mean, you have your whole life ahead of you. It, it's a trite saying, but it's true. And you have to realize that the choices that you make now in your youth are the foundation for who you will be as an adult. The choices that we make today shape and determine our character who we will be tomorrow and the day after that and next year and next decade and for the rest of our lives. And fortunately, it's never too late to make a change in your character. Our character is malleable. We can always grow. And it is necessary to keep growing. One of the challenges of being a student is that that terrible lie that says, I already know all this. We need to approach each 
fresh year with a beginner's mindset. To believe that we don't know everything, to have the humility to admit that we haven't mastered it all. And to be okay when our teachers bring us back to review things that we've heard before. We need to, to have that humility to make every effort to supplement our virtue with knowledge because we don't already have all knowledge. Sometimes we need to practice to go back to the fundamentals, to review the basics, and that's okay. And a teacher is going to be there to help and guide us, hopefully. Uh, martial arts famous practitioner Bruce Lee once said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Mastery is not something that comes quickly. It's something that takes a long time, a long time of study and practice and diligence. This, uh, this past week, I had the privilege to watch a, a candidate um, for ordination, someone who is looking to become a pastor, uh, being examined on his understanding of scripture and theology and his views. And one of the things that was a part of his examination was to give off the top of his head summaries of different books of the Bible. And he was asked to give summaries of, uh, not just summaries, but detailed outlines of Genesis and Romans, and to give uh, brief synopses of other books of the Bible. And he, he stood there in front of quite a few people being orally examined and having to give, I mean, not having any idea which books he was going to be asked about, but having to just know it so well that he could tell you what was in each chapter of each of these books and all the major points and themes therein. And I sat there thinking, wow, I mean, I, I've read my Bible. I, I know a thing or two, but boy, I don't know it anywhere near the level of detail and mastery that this man in front of me has accomplished. And it was a reminder to me that I need to be studying and being diligent even as an adult, it's easy to stagnate. It's easy to think that, I, I know this stuff already. But that's a trap. We need to keep growing. We need to keep learning. We need to take advantage of this moment because this moment impacts and determines our future. There's a really important phrase in the last part of this verse. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and are increasing. It's not enough just to have had them once. We need to keep growing in them and not allow ourselves to become stagnant. That is, that is a crucial part because if we become stagnant, we start to drift. We start to shrink. We start to lose that which made us effective or fruitful. But it's never too late. It's never no longer an option to start growing again. If you've been stagnating, if you've been lazy, repent and take advantage of this new school year in front of you. The future is going to require you to have grown. Everything that you are learning now is a preparation for your future. We plant the seeds for our future with our choices today. And that includes when you're studying subjects that you don't think are going to have anything to do with your life in the future. When you're in Algebra 2 and you are fumbling through quadratic equations and you think to yourself, I'm never going to use this. The truth is that you may not use quadratic formula in your everyday life as an adult, but you will use the steadfastness the self-control, the character and virtue that you've built up by struggling with difficult material, even when you don't understand why. That builds character. And that character is what is going to help make you fruitful and effective. So even if the formula isn't going to be useful in your everyday life, the practice of it will be. Keep your future in mind as you learn. Look for ways for the material that you're studying to be applicable. If you can't see how this is relevant, 
ask more questions until you do. Find ways to make it relevant. If you can't understand why we would study this, that means you need to keep asking more questions until you do understand it. Growing takes effort. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith. It doesn't come naturally. It doesn't always come easily. Some of us who are academically inclined, it may feel like it comes easily. But if it's coming so easily and we're not actually working at it, there's a good chance that it's not going to be that useful for us because we're not spending the time and effort to really learn the material. If you learn it just well enough to pass the test, that's not an investment in your future. Study and struggle and effort and working hard at material is what is going to make a positive difference and impact. You learn more when you struggle than when things come easily. So don't be afraid of the struggle. Don't be afraid when things get difficult. Don't get discouraged when you have a hard time mastering something. Be encouraged because you know that that struggle is what is going to produce the most valuable and the most lasting learning. Keep your past in mind. Realize all the things that have gone into preparing you for this moment. Think about the present. Think about the choices that you're making. Think about the options that are in front of you and how to make good choices. Realize last year, 25% of American adults admitted to not reading a single book in the whole year. Instead, they spent the time that formerly used to regularly be spent on reading, watching TV, or playing video games. Not necessarily bad activities in and of themselves, but when our choices, especially when they're consistently choosing comfort and pleasure and leisure over growth and study, what does that do to our character? Who is that going to make us become if we follow that trajectory for the next year or the next decade? Think about the choices that you're making every day and how you really want to spend your time in your life. And think about them in light of the future that God is calling you to. What is God calling you to do? What do you need to know? What do you need to learn how to do? The skills, the experiences that you're going to need to fulfill your calling. Make your education about preparing yourself for God's calling. Not just academically, but spiritually in your mind, in your heart, and your body, making yourself ready for whatever God calls you to do. If these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our lives to you. We lift up this new school year to you. And we ask that you would help us to make the most of the great gifts that you have given us the gifts of our time, the gift of resources that you've laid out in front of us and our families and access to tools and information and experiences. Lord, help us to be good stewards and to give you a return on your investment in us. We love you, God, and we're grateful for the opportunities to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, to be a part of your kingdom, to be ambassadors for you, and to see your kingdom spread to the ends of the earth, including our own hearts. We love you, God, and we pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Thank you guys for being here. We'll see you next month.